So you've told us that the universe started at a very low entropy state, and uh, but there was something funny going on with gravity that we don't fully understand that's allowed it to uh, um, form structures and become out of thermal equilibrium. You've talked about life, um, and there's uh, something that the second law almost evolved to help it accelerate its own process. So can you give us a history of the free energy, the low entropy state that we are using to keep ourselves alive at the moment? Where did that come from? If you go all the way back. Well, if you go all the way back, the answer seems to be that if you start a universe in, with inflation, you have a homogeneously distributed false vacuum energy, which then dumps it into the universe, dumps real matter into the universe. If that is the, that is the best explanation we have, and if that's the case, homogeneously distributed matter is all ready to clump, and so it's lowest entropy. That's how you start, that's how you solve the low entropy problem. I don't think it's, it's, it's as uh, problematic as you think, just it's just the reverse of what is normally the case with perfume in a room. And that's because simply you're gravitationally dominated, not kinetically dominated. So you start out with low entropy, then you get clumps, clumps, clumps. When you form those clumps, they start to heat up, then they form stars. Interestingly, when you form a star, you have hydrogen, helium. If in the Big Bang you had burned hydrogen, helium to iron, then you wouldn't have stars. So you have, the fact that you have hydrogen, helium around means that you don't start out with highest entropy material. That would be iron. You start out with hydrogen, helium, and therefore you can burn it. And then it releases. That's what the sun is doing. It's turning hydrogen into helium, and then if it were more massive, it would go all the way to iron. So that's a, a chain of events that requires the gravitational contraction to do that. And so it's like, uh, it's like having uh, water tra tap uh, trapped up here in a lake, and then you're digging a hole through here, and letting it go through, and then you can make a water wheel go as these hydrogen turns into helium, helium turns into silicon, silicon turns into iron, and then you're at the bottom. Then you're at sea level, and you can't get any more energy out of that. But then what you can do is collapse into a black hole, which sits there. And if it's really big, it'll start to evaporate after many, many years, 10 to the 100 years or so. The largest mass, the most supermassive black holes in the universe will evaporate after about 10 to the 105 years. And then they'll turn into photons. And then that truly will be, the, the universe will be in a heat death, an equilibrium, out of which no life form can, can exist. Because you need free energy, not just energy, to exist. Remember, the first law, energy is conserved. Second law, entropy increases. When you're at equilibrium, entropy is at a maximum, and you just have statistical fluctuations around that. Life forms can't exist out of that. Would that also apply if the universe eventually recontracted to a, a big crunch at the end? Would that change anything, or would time still have the same direction all the way through that? Well, a lot of cosmologists have tried to use this bouncing universe to regenerate. You know, you, 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 you contract, but you, you're, when you're contracting, you're not violating the second law of thermodynamics. No one has figured out a way to do that because many people think it's just a mathematical uh, identity. And so when you contract the universe, although it's getting hotter and hotter, um, you are not getting to be lower entropy. There's no way to reset the entropy dial, so it'll start low again. Unless somehow, in a way we don't understand, we can then dump, take all the energy of that universe and put it into a false vacuum. That's a reversal that I've never heard anybody talk about. And so, uh, all bets are off when it comes to that. And in the long-term fate of the universe, I mean, we, we've talked about the, the um, second law of thermodynamics, the increase of entropy as a mathematical identity, but it's a probabilistic mathematical identity. Yes. So in principle, if you have a universe that's infinite, you're going to get little fluctuations around the mean from time mm -hmm. to time. Mm -hmm. Is that ever going to be enough to sustain life? Well, if you and I are fluctuations, when you do a calculation of how, what happens to fluctuations around a, uh, an equilibrium value, they quickly return to the equilibrium value. And so you could say, well, are we returning to that? And uh, well, not very quickly. Um, uh, well, here, for example, here we have a little nice little model of a low entropy universe because I, I, I played with this for about five minutes and I got the only two bold blue ones here. But the point is about the mathematical identity. If I shake this up, then chances are that there will be more blue over here and more orange over here. So we can, on the other hand, there's a small chance that those two blue will go over here and it'll be lower entropy. But, but let's see what happens. We go like this and then what happens? Uh, oh, look at that. We got four orange over here and four over here, so we, it's going towards equilibrium. Um, I don't know if that answered any question, or not, but, but, but it, I, 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 my PhD student bought this as an example of entropy. But. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.